Hi, this is Spitfire, and I'm here today to talk to you about some of the different kinds of rescue breathing barriers that may be out there and somebody may bring to you if you were to do rescue breathing and ask you to use this device. People are no longer expected to put their mouth on someone's mouth, and particularly in a trauma, you may be dealing with blood, you know, somebody could have hit their face, so we really don't expect that. We're looking for you to use the proper supplies, and there are different barriers that are out there. One of the common barriers that you used to see a lot was this one called the microshield. And there are still barriers that use this bite piece that's in here. Uh, the bite stick is what they called it. And that bite stick is really something that just anchors this device so that you put it between the person's lips and it keeps it from sliding around in the face. Some of those old ones had too long of a bite stick on it, so this particular company no longer makes this one, but there are a lot of them out there. They went to a smaller version that fits into a keychain, so it would be handy for someone, and they made a shorter bite stick on there uh, that keeps it anchored again, but is more universal and can be used on small adults, children, um, that type of a thing. It's called the MicroShield Plus. We then have another one that's very handy to use and is one that, that I carry on my keychain, and this one is called the Rescue Key. When you take this out of this little case, you want to squeeze to pop it out of there. It's much easier than trying to reach in here with your fingers and pull it out. And what you have is this style right here. It has elastic that goes around the person's ears and is placed on the person like that. Not on you, the rescuer. You don't put it on. You put it on the other person. And it has a rubber dam. does a really good job of protecting you, keeping icky things behind it. Now, this one is, it looks similar, but it actually isn't. Um, what this company had done was put one of these flat barriers in there that a lot of you have probably seen when you've taken CPR-type classes, and they give you this barrier. This barrier is okay for a class, but it's not really good for uh, real-life use. And the reason is that this is just felt, felt, and people's germs and saliva and things will seep through here, and you will be exposed to their germs. Another reason I'm not fond of it is that once this gets wet, it really is hard to blow through there, and there's nothing that anchors it and keeps it in place, so it tends to slide around on a person's face, and it's just hard to use. Now, it is better than using nothing. It does keep the chunks behind. So... I would say don't get rid of it if that's all you got, but you might want to consider investing a little bit more. These things are only about $5. They're inexpensive. It would be worth um, spending a little bit more money and getting something that worked better. When it comes to professional supplies, there are two different kinds of barriers I want to show you. This is the most frequently used and common one. It's called the pocket mask or triangular barrier. Some people refer to it by its brand name, which is Ambu. Um, but it is essentially called a pocket mask. When you take that out of the container, you need to pop it into upright position to position it for use. This pointed part goes at the bridge of a person's nose and is placed down. And if it does have elastic on it, not all of them do, you just slide this around the person's head, and that'll keep this in place and keep it from falling off of their face. Uh, so this one is useful. You also may run into this one called the Seal Easy. And this one, you take this hole and you line it up with the person's mouth and place it down. It blocks off the person's nose, makes it really easy to get a seal. It does have a filter, sounds like this, that you place in here. And it keeps you high off the person's chest, makes it easy to use on adults, children, any sized face. You pull up on the jaw and blow. Just can't mess with this one. So um, either one of these, uh, when the EMTs get there, they'd be able to swap out whatever they're using to be able to give the breaths. So have the right supplies. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. We gave you a little information, but that certainly does not take the place of a full bystander assistance class. You can get more information at roadguardians.org.